Can you hear me? Yes, awesome. Hi, I'm Annika. I'm Langzio on Twitter, and I'm the manager of Travis Foundation, which is an institution that wants to make open source a better place. As you might have seen on Twitter, I couldn't keep it a secret. Today is my birthday, and for this, I want to dedicate this talk to my mom and to my dad, who have raised me and my little brother with loads of love and gave us all the encouragements and opportunities we could wish for. So, I'm going to talk about what diversity is, what it brings us, why we need it, and how we can achieve it for open source. <coughs> To understand what's going on, we need to take a look at the field of technology and engineering in general, where we find related issues and roots of the problems we are also faced with in open source. So let's get this started. Our world is as diverse as some teams can only wish for. We are by, surrounded by different age groups, genders, cultures, and religious backgrounds, job level, ethnicity, bodies and abilities, sexual preferences, etc. For this talk, I'm mostly going to focus on gender and I'm mostly going to talk about women, but for a second, let's look at what diversity actually looks like. It's not just one pink bubble and a lot of blue ones or the other way around. It's when you can't see what the dominating group is anymore because there is none. Also, not everybody fits into one category, but belongs to many, so this is actually what it kind of looks like. Did you know that only 10% of the world population are white males, but most of the people creating software that's being used all over the world are white males. So the people building software determine the way we interact with each other, the way we work, and how we build relationships. And if we have non-diverse teams in software development, it's a social imbalance. People solve the problems they see. And people from the same background will usually come up with the same ideas and same solutions. An extensive number of studies has shown that different backgrounds and experiences lead to a more creative, innovative, and productive workforce. So more awesome ideas around one table. Diversity is a key ingredient to growing a strong and inclusive business that's built to last. And even financially, it shows that companies that include a high percentage of women in senior positions compared to the average with no or few women in senior positions will get better, re better financial results. So we have seen that people with different backgrounds in a team are much more innovative than non-diverse teams. And teams, diverse teams, can more effectively market to consumers from different backgrounds. So it's no surprise then that studies show that a diverse workforce can capture a greater share of the consumer market. A good example for what a diverse team can come up with is the closed captioning feature on YouTube that you can switch on and off. So when the internet was invented, it was awesome for deaf people because they could understand everything because it was in writing. But then videos turned up and they couldn't understand them anymore. They were left out. And the deaf engineer from Google, Ken Herenstein, he developed and pushed forward the release of closed captioning for Google videos, which was later added to YouTube. And closed captioning turned out to have a huge business impact beyond the community of the deaf and well beyond what was anticipated. So people from all over the world can now understand YouTube videos that are not in their language. And thanks to this feature, the world, including the deaf community, can connect even further, and Google has proved it's important once more on the market. A great example, or let's say a sad one actually, is for when things are going wrong is Apple's health kit, which will be included in the Apple Watch and where you can, as they say, monitor all of your metrics that you are most interested in. But they could have phrased monitor all the men's metrics that men are interested in because you can monitor everything up to your sodium intake, but just not your period. Something that women have been tracking for centuries and that is the essential health-related issue women are concerned with every day. And this is such an obvious and absolute fail and a miss on Apple's side. It could have been a great watch and with even more satisfied customers. And these things happen if we have non-diverse teams. It's Paulina Reinhardt said, 
diversity is the default. If it's not diverse, it's broken. And I have to tell you, something is broken in our community. This is Garen Means. She says, I didn't know how to move forward. Things piled on over the years. There was a lot I had to put up within the culture of tech. It just didn't seem worth it anymore. Garen Means quit her job in tech after 15 years of being a programmer. So what is happening? She is not the only one. Women are leaving the industry. So let's, let's have a closer look at this. If we look at the path people usually take with entering tech, we can imagine a kind of pipeline. So ideally people get in and get around, they enter university, they study, they get a job, get promoted, etc. But a study from last year found that half the women entering the field will at some point leave, 50%. So we have holes in our pipeline so at this point, we are filling a damaged pipeline, which is very frustrating. So why does it leak? Why do women leave? Some of the reasons are hostile work environments. Women feel isolated. There's a lack of career paths for them, and often they're overlooked in promotions. And there's a lack of role models. The other thing is, we don't even have so many women in the field of technology. So while they make up around 48% of the labor force in general, in technology we have about 20%. In open source, it's much worse. We only have 11% of women. So this is our problem. Out of the few women that make it into tech, half of them are leaving. One of the barriers that keep women from entering field easily or make it to the top is that the bar is set so much higher for women and minorities. Researchers have found in blind studies that women's work has to be 2.5 times as good as men's to be considered equally. So this is because of, if, of unconscious bias and stereotypes we have. So let's quickly talk about stereotypes. We love that the idea that we can perceive something objectively by looking at it and seeing the truth. But our truth is shaped by biases and stereotypes. And stereotypes are learned through cultural messages and stories, comments from family and friends and portrayals in the media. These reproduce those unconscious biases and hold up the barriers for women. There's a Harvard test on biases. It's called Implicit, and you can do it online. And I will, I will upload a link to this later with, a with these slides. And this test has found that everybody has measurable bias. Around 70 to 80% have biases against women in tech. Even women working in tech have those biases. There are also biases against like, the people preferring white to African American or preferring young people. But nobody reports those biases. So no one thinks they do, but everyone has them. Stereotypes. <laughs> They don't only shape the things we see, or better, think to see, but our understanding of the world. I can, only, I can only recommend to read some of those studies about diversity. It's really overwhelmingly obvious and it's wonderful to read. We will also share them later online. So to summarize them all. A diverse team is not only a representation of our diverse world and socially fair, it makes your team more productive, come up with more creative and innovative solution, creates an atmosphere where everybody feels more comfortable with, makes people stay longer in their job, gets you better financial results and a greater market share. Too long didn't read, diversity is awesome. So, okay, great. So let's get us some of that. What can we do? We can fix some leaks in the pipeline by creating a supportive environment, not only on school and college level, but importantly also in our work surroundings. That means make sure women's voices are being heard. Give them back up and push them forward. Believe in them and don't repeat stereotypes. Invest in their training and most importantly, recognize their work. I can only recommend to take this bias test from Harvard and it will help you to accept that you have them and make your unconscious bias conscious and counteract them. Counteract also means questioning them and questioning traditional beliefs and always ask, 
Why are we doing it this way? This helps dismantle hidden biases in procedures that may produce more barriers for women in tech. So we haven't talked about kids much, but I can't stress enough how important our roles in their lives is and the way we act and treat them. So let kids discover the world without treating them differently because of their gender. Kids are natural adventurers. Let them discover our wonderful world without constraining them to role-specific behavior that changes every other century. Let them be kids, not girls or boys. As key as it is for men to support women, it's as important for, for women to do the same. So connect to others, reach out. It's always easier or much more fun, much more fun with a friend, so take one and make yourself visible. I can do that myself. I can, I can get off my couch more often and go to user groups and meetups and dinners and take part. I can make myself visible in attending and also applying. I should do more conferences and generally dare to do more. Try to be a role model for future women to look up to. And I'm not saying this is easier. It's super hard. <laughs> but if others are supportive and if I involve my friends and family, it's much easier. Also, find other women who you can support. If it's with a tiny email saying, hey, I love what you're doing, keep doing it, or backing her up in a meeting, or pushing her to give a talk. So, women and men, we all need to cause disruption and break stereotypes. We have to remember that words are powerful. Studies have shown that we perform worse if we hear that we're not good at what we do just before. So stop telling women they can't do math and stop telling men they can't take care of their kids. Words are powerful, so use yours wisely. And to show you a great example how we are implementing this and changing the future of open source, let me tell you a summer story. It's a story about Rails Girl Summer of Code. Rails Girl Summer of Code is a scholarship program that enables women to work on open source projects in any language. It provides a long-term learning goal for the worldwide movement that is Rails Girls. Rails Girls Summer of Code started off as a kind of wishful thinking of some Rails Girls coaches and organizers. They wanted to give Rails Girls students a perspective. So after attending the beginner workshop and falling in love with programming, the students are encouraged to start their own study group and keep on learning. And now they actually could keep on learning towards a goal, the Summer of Code. And the Summer of Code took the whole Rails Girls movement to the next level in connecting all the good things that are happening in the Rails Girls community and keeping the momentum going and companies and everybody else involved in open source. The concept of these scholarships is that they are full-time for three months and sponsored. Always two students will pair up. They will choose an open source project they want to contribute to and coordinate with a mentor. They will find some coaches and then apply. And last year, we've had 162 women apply from all over the world, coming from different fields. They were movie directors or photographers. They studied human-computer interaction and French philology or worked in marketing. But they all shared the same summer. They all were coding on open source projects. So with the whole initiative, we're contributing to open source and work towards more diversity in tech. We're also supported by wonderful companies like GitHub and Travis, which are partners, for example, for this program. Together with them and many, many awesome human, human beings <laughs> who donated out of their own pockets, we raised around $80,000 each year and could sponsor 10 teams. We also have volunteering teams that didn't get a sponsored seat but they wanted to contribute no matter what, which is very inspiring. So all in all, we've had 34 teams in two years. That's 64 students who worked on 27 different open source projects. And these are some of, some of these projects we've had in the last two years. My favorite one is by far Spikerinnen, because it is a hands-on fix to the problem of few women speaking at conferences. It's a list where women can make themselves visible and sign up with their biography and the topics they can talk about. And then organizers can find speakers or moderators for their conferences or events. And right now, over 700 women are registered there. 
And my favorite part is that it was built by a Rails Girls study group, which formed after the first Rails Girls workshop in Berlin in 2012. Because they met on Mondays, they called themselves Ruby Monday Study Group, Ruby Monsters. <laughs> so <laughs> they kept on learning after the first workshops and built speakerinnen while they were learning how to code. And two of the Ruby Monsters, Anja and Carla, who were directing movies and working in journalism before, they made it into the first edition of Rails Girls Summer of Code. And they contributed to Sinatra and spoke about their summer in a conference in Kiev and helped spread the word and the spark of Rails Girls Summer of Code. Anja and Carla are now actually working both at Travis CI as junior developers. And they're really embarrassed about their picture I showed. Um, they also submitted SpeakerInnen as one of the open source projects for Rails Summer of Code and are mentoring the students during the summer, which is where their story took on speed. So they are now giving back to the program that changed their lives and they are highly visible role models and coaches and mentors for others to follow suit. And this is such a dream story that I will never tire of telling it. It shows what Rails Girls and Rails Summer of Code made possible. But wait for it, it gets even better. We asked all the alumni of Rails Girls Summer of Code of 2013 and 14 what they are doing now because we wanted to know if our program and our mission actually worked. And we found this. Over 90% of the Rails Girls Summer of Code alumni are now working in tech. And 8% of them even founded own startups. So there are so more so many more Anya and Carlas out there. Each year more than 30 women are attending the program and have a chance to change their lives. We are introducing newcomers from different backgrounds to open source. We are sponsoring women to work on open source projects and we bring, bring them to the scene and diversify the teams working on these projects, putting different points of view around the table. We are increasing the newcomer friendliness of the communication and the culture. We need people supporting us in our cause. So if you've got a couple of hours, become a coach or submit your, open or your, your own open source projects or help us organize. I'm also super happy to tell you that we've opened our crowdfunding campaign just in time for this talk. <laughs> and um, you can go there and donate. Every amount counts and gets us closer to fund those teams and make the summer actually happen. So to summarize with Rails Girls Summer of Code, we are not only helping to fix the leaks in the pipeline in creating supportive environments for women at work, boosting their careers, contacting biases, creating role models. We even get more women into the pipeline and diversify companies like, for example, Travis CI and create hands-on solution for the lack of women in open source and tech. Let's remove all the barriers for women and minorities in open source. Let's build a thriving community. Put in our love and support to make some change. Because this is our community. This is our responsibility. So yes, diversity brings you more success and your company and creates better financial results and gets you greater market share. But in the end, it's really not just because of statistics and facts and diversity as a selling factor but it's about our wonderful, diverse world. In the end, we're talking about social justice. In the end, it's about building the world we want to live in. This is why the fuck we should care. Thank you.